As we go deeper in our understanding of neural networks, we need to introduce the concept of matrices operations. We will work around this small example of a neural network where we have five inputs and two outputs. Our goal will be to calculate as fast as possible the outputs. At first, we will place our input values in this column, which forms a matrix. For the moment, I will only ask you to see this at the table to store the data of our neural network. Following this ID, you will extract the weight connecting to the first neural output. I use here the letter W to express the weight, and you will find as exponent the input neuron and as indices the output neuron. Just like we did for the input, we will also place the weights in another matrix, but horizontally this time. And we repeat the same operation for the weights connecting to the second neuron. To calculate the value of our neurons, we distribute the output to their respective weights. We next store all the calculation in a new matrix. Please notify this step will compress all the multiplication by summing everything, which is exactly what we want. And this is it. This is how a simple layer is calculated with matrices. If you followed my former tutorial, you will see that this network does not contain biases or activation function. But don't worry, we will get back there soon. Let's now take a look at all the steps we need to calculate to obtain our outputs. If we use a sequential approach, calculating each multiplication one after the other, as we would do for a simple for loop, we see that we need a total of 10 steps. However, the result of each step does not impact the following. So what about calculating all of them at the same time in parallel? We come from 10 steps to one, but what about the summation following each multiplication? In the sequential approach, this means that we need to add 8 more steps, one for each addition. You should logically wonder if we necessarily need these 8 same steps in our parallel case too, or if we could maybe parallel them too. Let's get back to our example. We see here we can parallelize by summation of 2 by 2, adding only 4 steps. Please note here that the fifth input neuron has waited for all computation to be made before being used. In general, you try to obtain some power of 2 number of neurons, which means 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on, because you can easily optimize them this way. So we could add up to 3 more neurons, it won't change anything in the computation time. You can also see that adding another neuron as output does not change the number of steps, because it would also be calculated in parallel. Here are our results. A sequential approach, when everything is calculated separately in a simple for loop, takes 18 steps. On the other side, parallelizing showed to be 4.5 times faster. We could code parallel process in Python, C, or Java to perform this computation. But matrices have been used far before neural networks, and we already have libraries which does all this programming process for us, like NumPy, PyTorch, TensorFlow, and we will use all of them in the future tutorials. But be careful about one thing. The order of the matrices matters in a multiplication. If we take back our example, each five row of the second matrix is distributed to the five columns of the first matrix. However, if we invert the order, we can distribute one of the rows to the column, but we remain with one weight for which it won't work. This makes this operation impossible. To understand why, let's write the shape of each matrix we have. In the first case, we start by a 2 by 5 matrix, which receives the distribution of a 5 by 1 matrix. In the second case, however, we start by a 5 by 1 matrix, which must receive the distribution from a 2 by 5 matrix. Do you see why we have an issue? In the first case, the number of columns on the left correspond with the number of row of our second matrix on the right. This is, however, not the same case in the second example. Also, you may look at our output matrix which is a 2 by 1 matrix. You will easily find this comes from the union of our prior arrays. And there comes the question of a bias and an activation function. How do we implement them with matrices? Let's get back to our summing example. But since we need more than simple multiplication and addition, we will call all these sums respectively S1 and S2. Adding a bias is very easy. We just need to add a matrix after the multiplication. In this case, the neuron value will be distributed to their respective sum. We only have to activate the result to obtain the output with biases and activation. Easy, isn't it? Using matrices, we have seen how we could efficiently calculate these neural network outputs. Not that if you had more layers, the process would be exactly the same. You would first take the output of your hidden layers, here NO1 and NO2, and then multiply by the matrix for the weight, which represent the connection between the second and the third layer. Add then a bias and activate the total. 
and we see that this process can be repeated. Before leaving this video, let's have a small discussion about the nomenclature we will use to talk about these operations. In our case, W11 is a simple real number that we call a scalar. The array of multiple scalars is called a vector, and the array of multiple vectors is called matrix. There is a similar matrix which exists called the transpose matrix of A. You can easily recognize it by the capital T marked as an exponent. That's all for today. If you like this content, please subscribe to follow this video about neural networks tutorial. And if you want to look deeper at what matrices are, I actively recommend you to watch the series of videos realized by Thribu Rambran. You will find the link in the description below.